My name is Tanya Powers. I am the Segment Marketing Manager at Canon Solutions America. I am responsible, very long title, uh, I'm responsible specifically for graphic arts and um, what, what, what we mean by graphic arts is the commercial print and the book printing space. Um, I work very closely with uh, my counterparts on the marketing team and product marketing and, and our partner solutions marketing teams to help identify what are the appropriate end-to-end -end solutions services for commercial printers and book printing space um, and to help bring those, um, those solutions and services to market to you, my people. <laughs> so I have people. Um, so if I, that's right, my peeps. Um, so that's, that's what I do. I'm very much uh, interested in always in hearing directly from you guys and trying to understand what your pain points are in your business and, and helping kind of bring that message back to our team, back to R&D. Um, and, and whoever will listen to help you guys, um, you know, deal with those challenges that you're dealing with. Um, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about Canon Solutions America. I think you heard all, all heard from my manager, Francis McMahon, on the keynote panel Monday night. I thought he did a pretty good job, you know. He wasn't bad. Um, so he, went, he, he did an, uh, an overview of who Canon Solutions America is, the direction of our company, where we're headed, um, the focus uh, that we're putting on in production print. You, you heard about our significant R&D investment we, we give back every year. And um, the Canon is paying a lot of attention to the production print space specifically. So a lot of focus on that. Um, so, you know, PPS is definitely um, putting a lot into um, understanding our customers' needs. Um, we talked a bit about the solutions and media lab that we have now headquartered in Boca, all around trying to develop new solutions and papers uh, for you in the ink space so you can go after those new opportunities in your, your markets. So um, really I want to put more of a focus on Bob Radges today. I'm going to bring him up in a minute. He is the chief customer officer at SG360. I think you all saw him speak in the panel just before lunch. So. Um, I'm, I'm going to share a video that we, we developed with SG360 just to give you a nice little snapshot of the company, but then I'll bring Bob up and he can talk a little bit more about his, the business, the, how they've grown, and um, talk a bit about his inkjet equipment and uh, a really cool program that he's put together that incorporates inkjet into the overall program. He'll share a little bit about um, what he did with that program and the, the value that he added to his customer with that program. And I think we're going to have an opportunity for some question and answers from you. I definitely encourage this to be a conversation, not us up here just talking at you. So I'll probably interject with questions for Bob. I really would like for you guys to interject with any questions that might come up. So please feel free to jump in at any time. But I'll start with the video first. SG360 is a pretty neat company. The plan was to pull all the services to provide end-to-end -end delivery of, of our pieces. If you look at our shop here, you know, the first thing you'll see are our photography department. Canon cameras everywhere. That work flows into our pre-press department. We do some retouching. Small runs, we can move over to our, our Canon image press. Maybe it's a large variable run that would fit onto our color stream or maybe it's millions of pieces that we print over in our large presses and then these other jobs come together and we deliver them through the mail stream. So we have close to 600,000 square feet under roof here and about 300 employees. A lot of people are talking about the changing marketplace and you know, quite honestly, print is going away in a lot of places. Some runs are getting smaller. Pieces are certainly getting more targeted, which plays into our, into our marketplace. You know, probably 10 years ago, we. We were really focused on just print. Now we're trying to put print as uh, a strong component in the mix. If you're doing it right and tying into their other channels, the mobile, the social, the web, those things all have a lift. And, and the marketers recognize that you can't ignore the print channel. You know, uh, printing um, in the last five years has really become more and more data-driven. Here at SG360, our variable data is increasing every day. The quantities of material that we had to manufacture kept increasing. I started getting concerned about where I was with my cut sheet digital variable machines. And I, I knew that somewhere in my future there was a, an inkjet machine. It, uh, and it didn't take long for that to evolve to, to the level where we use it for a direct mail all the time now. We take our investments serious and our vendors. So when we choose a partner, 
we need to know that they're going to be around and supporting us in the long haul. You know, there's a lot at stake here, and everybody really needs to end up making money. So Canon has a, has a large selection of presses, but they understood our marketplace and were able to come to us with specifically what fit the direct mail opportunity that we were looking to accomplish. One of the things that I adopted about four years ago was lean manufacturing, so we set a goal here of 2% continuous improvement every month. Canon knew that and they helped us a lot with uh, different configurations of the presses, trying to utilize space, actually knowing the flow of production that we were trying to achieve. One of the other things that was very important to me was the service. And I had a really good relationship with CSA as far as the service guys actually being very helpful. Uh, it was more than just making the sale and you know letting us on our own. And you know we have not missed a deadline. One machine, you know, you're you're relying on that thing working around the clock, and we've been good with it. The Prisma system actually is, is very robust. We've been able to build a full end-to-end -end workflow there, so that when your piece comes into our system, from the time the data arrives all the way through the mail stream, we'll be able to identify exactly where that is. One of the other things that's supported us very well is this, uh, this Presco site that they offer. We're able to get marketing materials off of there. It's, it's been pretty helpful. This is something that's ongoing. Um, what we want to achieve, um, different types of work, Canon is always working with us to end up trying to achieve those goals. Business is booming for us at SG360. I think it's a testament to a new story and uh, talking about results instead of just ink on paper. You know, there's, there's, there's always new things coming up. Print's always changing. The demands of customers are always changing. You have to be an innovator and bring suggestions and ideas if you're truly going to be viewed as a, as a partner in their relationship. And our ability to do that is heavily weighted on the fact that we do have open communication with Canon. Really, I think print will be here to stay. I don't actually believe in the demise of print. People are very visual and tactile. There's lots of opportunity, and if we're creative, it's going to build new opportunities in, in areas that we haven't thought of. You know, to my competition, I say lots of luck. <laughs> my favorite line. <laughs> So, you know, I didn't notice, that, I, this is the second time I saw it earlier, did, did you notice when the, the guy walked up to the machine and kind of kicked it, to, yeah. they, they taught us that in the, in the yep. service. We did. <laughs> <laughs> but it, so to, to bring you up to speed, I, I gave a little bit in the, uh, the, the presentation just before lunch, but I had my own company for 30 years. We were in the go digital shop and then I... Uh, I get first introduction into the inkjet technology was about six years ago. I don't know if you were at the D Scoop one, but they, they showed these presses running at huge speeds and, and I had a I started out as a typesetter and you know Apple came along and kind of changed that. And then, and then I was a service bureau pre-press company. And, and one of the strengths I always felt was the, the ability to to you know innovate or transform the, the company. And I saw this machine and, and I saw the volumes that it can kick out and the opportunities and and it truly is a big price difference between what we run on our on our indigos and it, and it's opened up much larger runs than I ever ever dreamed would would happen so you know I found a partner in Segerdahl it was a nice fit for us they they did not have any digital I mean this is a you know a 200 million dollar company without a single piece of digital equipment now they had Imaging on their web presses, but not none of the you know indigos or those icons or any of those kind of kind of machines. So every one of my employees found a job there, and uh, they've kind of given me free reign to control the uh, the digital end of things. I was very fortunate they had a strong data department, and we we do a lot of healthcare things, so that the infrastructure of that data department was there, and we run the GMC software, and and so that made my life a lot easier in putting that in place. We had. A, much smaller group that we were running on XMPy software, um, and you know. To, so it sounded like you found a company where you both complemented each yeah, other very well. A, it was a really nice fit. Um, two years into it, and uh, still there, they haven't kicked me out yet. <laughs> most of the most of the people are still there too. So this is you know our our three uh, three pillars that they they talk about all the time, and and the brand directions is really the area that we we go and put the value add into, into things and. Uh, um, that drives a lot of the, the variable data and the digital print that we do. 
we first put it in, you know, we knew we had, a, had an opportunity just to take and move some of the short run web jobs that we had to do the versions and we couldn't make money on them, but we still had to take them to do the larger web jobs. Those moved over and that was a piece of cake. And I knew how to do the, the digital variable data printing from the indigos. So there, it was a pretty quick learning experience for us. The, the part of, you know, handling rolls versus sheet fed was a little bit of a, a transition, but we, you know, we moved pretty quickly into, oh. You know, adopting to that. What uh, were some of the surprises with the roll to sheet fed? Uh, you guys have version. all heard of time. You know, this this paper thing is crazy, especially in, in our marketplace. You know, where you're kind of used to being an on-demand guy. You get you quote a job, you put a paper in there, and you 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 can win the order. You can be able to print it the next day, and now you find out the paper is four weeks out, or not even in the country, or something like that. And it's so trying to standardize on set rolls of paper that are kind of your house stocks and you're just gonna limit yourself to, to those types of things. But the other, the other big surprise was, you know, the quality's good enough. It's not the same as what we were running on the Indigos, and I'll, I'll show you some samples here, but for most of our, because you have such a huge cost advantage, um, you know, on, a, on an Indigo sheet, it's eight cents for a consumable. It's, it's a fraction of a penny, and, and the amount of speed that these things run at, to, the, the price difference that you can offer a customer on something run on one of these presses is so much better. It's, it, and the quality gets better all the time. The papers are improving. I know there's a lot of discussion that you know gloss doesn't work. I've got some nice samples here. Um, they, we were able to put together a paper sample book for them that shows all the varieties. The stocks really do have a huge impact on, the, some of these on the print. But, uh, <laughs> You know, you're able to find the right ones at the right right price point. I think we're all in the around. same marketplace is that we're not in that transaction area where you've got a, a little bit more latitude that you can buy a nicer stock and put some more money into that to make the piece look a little bit better and still outperform the, the price models of a cut sheet piece. So, you know, to, to keep this more on a case study basis, one, you know, for for us, we, we have, and then we've got a, a design, a, the, an, almost an agency group. We also have a design group that puts together formats that run well on our presses all the way through um, our data group. We have offset, digital, web. Um, one of our big claim to fames is we've got a, a Sunday press that we run a little Costco mailer that probably most of you guys get and it all comes off finished okay. in line. I think we're the only guys that uh, do, uh, you know, full commercial direct mail on a press like that. But it's pretty neat how it cuts it all into ribbons. If you ever get, get home and take it apart, you'll see that they're all glued together and it's running at 2,000 feet a minute. It's, it's pretty cool. All right. So your main reason for incorporating the inkjet press into your facility was kind of fill that gap between your indigo. Because I wanted one. Oh, you just wanted one. <laughs> <laughs> they're really I, cool. Uh, <laughs> it, it was a piece that we were missing. We had, I got exposed to a whole higher level of bigger of customers, you know, and and the run lengths, this Home Depot piece that got passed around. We were running that on Indigos, and it would take my four Indigos, and I plus I sourced a couple out a week and a half. And the the thing on that piece is that it's all relevant predictive purchasing information. Now I can get it out in a day and a half instead of a week and a half, all pre-sorted to go into our commingle facility and. So it's delivered faster. I was able to cut about a nickel off a piece and still increase my profits. Um, so it was a, a, a tremendous boost for that. But the, the piece that I wanted to, to talk about was this, this one that we, we, you know, from the concept all the way through delivering it to the print, we were, we were involved in this. And it uses just about every piece of equipment we have in the shop. And that uh, you know, we, we pre-print this, convert it, it's uh, done on our, our Komori presses. It's got some uh, soft touch UV on it, and it's, it's, it's a, a pretty neat piece. We do the jacket on the same presses, but this is for the uh, United Mileage Awards. And uh, we farm out these cards, but everything else is, is done in-house. So we, we have a big facility that's called Secured Assembly, and uh, if you ever come by and see it, it's pretty, we, we, uh, do a lot of work for uh, Leo Burnett, where they take these tobacco coupons. You know, so they reward you if you're a smoker with a carton of cigarettes. And we may get $10 million worth of coupons to, to, 
to attach the personalized pieces and send those out as, as rewards. But in that facility, we do a lot of what we call secured assembly. And we have a couple of machines that are these PacSmart machines that will take and lay down these personalized cards onto this jacket here, fold it over, or, well, lay down a ticket that we print on our inkjet press, um, a, the luggage tag and a couple of coupons, fold it over and glue it, and it's all hands-free with four camera matches on it. On the back here, there's a little um, 2D barcode that's, that's matched through here. So it's inserted into an envelope, inkjet, uh, inkjetted, and put into the trays and right into our co-mingle that's sent throughout the country. So this piece here, and it's, it's almost, um, it's almost a, up to, a, I think it's about 3 million pieces a month right now that we're running. And maybe some of you guys have gotten these, these mileage. But this starts out as a, a full sheet. I know Which there's a couple around. around in the, we, we print a full sheet off of this, and it's, it's all personalized, so it has the city that you live in. It's got your mileage reward things. And, and the intent was to design it, and this is where our design department came in, design it to look like an old-fashioned airline ticket. With the, and out, out of one sheet, we print it in the commingle order, in, and, and it's printed. Those are, those are just blank sheets, and I mean, personalization on it. But printed with the city that you, you live in and your data and everything, and then it's die cut with the scores, and, and then it's folded, slit and glued all, and it, it took a couple passes to engineer it just right. But so the piles of these pieces are drawn off, and all this, uh, this comes together. We, we first started out um, hand assembling these. We had about eight people on the line, and we could get about 500 out an hour. And now we moved it over to these PacSmart machines. And I got a little video of it. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of cool as to how the, the thing uh, comes through. But it's, it's grabbing the, uh, the luggage tags, folding over the pieces. This is the jacket. It lays everything down, folds it over, glues it, finished program in, into an envelope. And we do two, we got a couple of lines of these going. We do 2,000 of them an hour. And we're able to take this piece from the time we get data to kicking it out to, to delivering it in six days. So it's a, it's a neat little, uh, and I'd never seen, seen one of these. And Rick Jutra, some of you guys know him. He's a pretty dynamic CEO for our company. And, the, and he, got, he you know, I was grabbing a bunch of these to come to the meeting. And he's <laughs> like, well, you know, you can't do this. You can't talk about it. But when you build such a customized program, I feel common. And this is one of the things in lean manufacturing is, is that if you're always striving for that 2% improvement, the competition never going to catch you. And this type of, of, of work that comes across the whole platform, it's, it builds such a tight relationship. And that's the types of things that you find with these uh, high value add programs is, is that they're not looking to leave you. They're always just looking at how we can improve it and make it better. So that, that was a piece that I, uh, you know, I, I was, I couldn't have done it without the strength of the rest of the organization, but the inkjet is the, the critical uh, driver that uh, all the personalization is centered around. And printed on gloss stock, lots of people question how good this, this stuff can look. I know that there's some other, for Carnival, we're doing with, this piece came out with this heavy coverage of the red, and that's on the Mitsubishi gloss stock as well. And that's um, also, we have a sample of that, and I can pass out the media catalog as well, so you'll see that Mitsubishi gloss in there. We, and it's, it's got a, a mix of uh, stocks, so from more of the commodity type stocks all the way to some very high value uh, full color stocks. The Sham one is one we're very proud of. If you want to take a look at that one, it's, it's really impressive. So, um, while they're taking a look at that. Yeah, and, uh, I, I guess this is just uh, just the results. Is that you know the the piece has a four-way camera matches. It's, there's a, um, from the time we get the data, we're able to put it into the mail stream in six days, and uh, you know we do delivery to the BMCs all across the country. So you know the the value add, and that that's a, a shared kind of a revenue with the with the customer and the postal, and. You know, this, this is outdated. This is much higher than that now, that the amount that's, that's coming in. That's almost like the weekly volumes. So, so it's apparently a weekly they're, program. Yeah. they're very pleased with the program yeah. and it's going to continue to grow? Yes. All right. So were there any questions for Bob about this particular program? Any questions in general? 
I did want to open it up just kind of for a q and A. I I asked Bob to bring some other samples if there were, because he's, he's doing a lot of different unique programs and uh, value-add offers to um, uh, several large accounts. So I know you had the one with Sony I thought was a really good story. that You talked a little bit about the Home Depot. Yeah. Where is the Sony one? This one right here. There you go. This, um, this was a job we were printing offset, and uh, we were able to, you know, just just like on Indigos, you know, there's certain crossovers as to where volumes make sense for a cut sheet. And this was a run that we were doing offset. We were, and then we would go and image it offline. Fifteen thousand pieces. It came in a couple hundred dollars less, on fully personalized than what the traditional offset would would have been. And it was all uh, done in the the commingle order and dropped right into our mail stream. But I, I, you know, I personally I like the. It was done on a gloss stock on offset, and I think that the, these are the uh, coated mats. I think that's is that Glad filter. Or, I, I forget what's. Do you recall which? But one? Um, yeah. So some of the uh, the mat stocks I think look so good as far as the results that we're getting off. Well, I think of, you mentioned once that they seen there's a shift in some of the marketing agencies or. Yeah. They're at least, uh, that that, that's what what I'm feeling is is that you know the gloss stocks instead of uh, having that you know well, maybe like 1980s mm -hmm. you know high the the softer appeal of what some of the matte stocks and things bring seems a little bit more modern and and with Mark I, I know we do a lot of work for even just just straight offset work is that, that like the gap and other people are are moving away from the gloss stocks in our, in our mm -hmm. traditional print too the uh, this is a, a piece for Carnival. Um, you know, they were able to take all their all their vari variables, you know, whether you like to, to go in the casino or the shore excursions or whatever whatever you preferred. They, they we started out on the on the mat stocks, and they, this one just recently moved to a gloss one. I don't know if I don't see. I don't think any we of those had around. the gloss ones for that one. I had them. You gave them all away. You know, so like you bring it. a sample to these they guys sold. and they give them all away, I think and then they ask for more. steal them. They walk away. <laughs> But, uh, so, um, any questions from you guys? I might have one more for Bob. So uh, besides just the inkjet was really cool, and that's why you purchased it. Were mm -hmm. there any other reasons why you chose Canon Solutions America? Um, it, we didn't know where our volume was going to go on. And one of the things that I really liked about the press was the ability to upgrade to a higher speed without having to swap it out. and. Uh, you know, we've had the press now for about 14 months, and I think we've already we're already having the discussions to move it up to the to the higher speed. So just a uh, just a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's all. We can improve our press speed. I think it's about a third, right, Mike? Is that what the upgrade from 30? Uh, 318 to 417. Yeah. This is one of Dick Cheney's daughters. <laughs> they were all supposed to be sample A sample. I thought I pulled all of them. What model, what model uh, machine do you have? We have the 3700, and then we have a Hunkler. Uh, we just went with the Sheeter. I, one of the big things that Segredal does, or SG360 does real well, is inline manufacturing. If you, you know, that, that Costco piece, you know, to see that 75 inch roll of paper come down to a finished piece, we, we have inline bindery on almost all of our, we have eight web presses and only one is a sheeter press. Those are where all the others have that inline manuf manufacturing. And, and those, are, those are digital presses too? Those are, those are just traditional web. They do have imaging on them, but the point, I, we've got such a mix of jobs that we just went with a sheeter press on this one. We, you know, we considered the roll to roll and some of the other things for, for right now, we're, but the, the booklet me and that uh, uh, Mueller, Mueller Martini for the, for the variable data. That's probably our next uh, piece that we would put in because that's a pretty neat uh, piece for for combining offset and digital together. Okay. Anything else? Any questions? We've got um, a large group of my team in the back on the product marketing side. Our Mike Roberts, our VP of Sales. Any questions for them? No. Quiet bunch. I think it's the food. <laughs> this is what happens after lunch. <laughs> so, and we, well, we almost finished right on time, right? Not too early. Um, this is some contact information. If you, I think we're going to share all these slides with you guys if you ever want, if you want to follow up with us. Some of you, we, I believe we have some one-on-one -on -one meetings later today, or you can look for any of us. Um, 
at dinner or whatever, pull us aside if you have any more questions about Canon Solutions America. We're happy to help answer any of those that you have. Okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you.